Thank you, Nick. I will now review agreements and contracting, which are essential to gain access to all of our services, offerings, and state-of-the-art capabilities that Nick did a wonderful job of showcasing. Bringing it back to the beginning, I wanted to remind folks that while we are part of a larger group of collaborators and experts in the integrated photonics field, AIM Photonics was initially funded by a federal award, and that award is administered by RF SUNY. When you see agreements from us, you will see that the contracting party is the Research Foundation for the State University of New York on behalf of the SUNY Polytechnic Institute. Looking back at the process flowchart for a design submission and focusing on access to the AIM PDK, there are two documents that can grant you access. These two documents are the Process Design Kit License Agreement, or PDKLA, or the Technical Data Use Agreement, or TDUA. Execution of either document can grant you access to the AIM PDK. Once either one of these are fully executed, you are sent a secure download link from us to download the latest version. We are currently recommending PDK version 5.0 for current MPW submissions. The main difference between these two agreements has to do with IP and licensing. The PDK LA grants users access to analog photonics information IP in addition to RF SUNYs, and commercialization requires licensing agreements with AP and discussions with RF SUNY. The TDUA grants access to RF SUNY information and IP, and commercialization requires discussions with only RF SUNY at this time. This document includes the license if fabricated at SUNY Poly, but discussions must still be had. The net here is to know and understand your contracts and understand what it is that you'd like to do with us before engaging. Please read through these documents carefully. Now that you have access to the PDK, the next step is to fabricate your design. To do that, there are a few agreements that are required. Bear with me through this next part, as it is very important to understand if you want to fabricate with us. Execution of either document shown above, the AIM Membership Agreement or the Non-Disclosure Agreement, or NDA, provides terms and conditions to govern disclosures of confidential information between the counterparty and the RF. Either one of these documents are required to purchase MPW space, a private run, or TAP facility services. The membership agreement is available to download directly from our website. Benefits of AIM membership include special MPW pricing, submitting proposals, participating in technical working groups or roadmap discussions, and much more. We encourage everyone to see if AIM membership is right for you, but if it's not a good fit, then the NDA is the other option. In order to purchase services from us, wafer run agreement or TAP facility services agreement is required. Execution of a wafer run agreement, it reserves your space on an MPW run or purchases a private run. Execution of a TAP facility services agreement purchases TAP services. These agreements set terms and conditions for payment and delivery of hardware. Attachment three of these agreements is the export control form. Export control Certification is required as part of the above agreements, and it also is required for design submission. We encourage you to engage with us early prior to MPW tape out so that we can close and finalize all the paperwork that is required. Looking at the technology support site, access to this help desk is recommended during the process shown in the dotted line on this slide. In order to access this help desk, desk space, we need either the PDKLA or the TDUA and a fully executed membership agreement or NDA. I know a lot of the engineers on this call will appreciate this logic statement, but this is what is required in order for us to grant you access to the help desk. Now I'd like to hand it over to Professor Robert Norwood and Dr. Zoran Jandrick, who will be providing us with some industry testimonials on our MPW program and services.